Beautiful. Taylor, hold on. No, I can't see. <clears throat> Matt, um, Patricia, and Tim Kelly from England. Great. Can you hear us? Gwen, can you hear us? This is Mickey. I can hear you. Okay. She's going to be putting the notes together. So. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> well, welcome. Uh, welcome to our May 2022. Commission meeting. Uh, I want to thank the village and the, uh, the town of Turn for hosting it to us today. In your packets, uh, again, in your emails uh, that you received from Katie uh, last week is a uh, proposed agenda for today's meeting and also the, the minutes of the uh, April 18th meeting that we had in Silver, uh, Silver Beach. Uh, hopefully, y'all have an opportunity to look at the agenda. Any questions or comments on that? If not, we have a motion to accept the, uh, the agenda. All those? Check it. All those in favor? Uh, again, as I said, we have the uh, minutes, uh, April 18th meeting that we had in Selby Beach. If you don't have an opportunity to review those minutes, they look right to me. Any questions or comments on that? If not, do I have a motion to accept the uh, minutes as uh, presented? I will move to accept. Second. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Okay, very good. Thanks. We'll move right into uh, uh, chairman report here. Uh, I think we had a very successful local leadership conference last month in uh, at Turning Stone. A little bit later on in the meeting today, Katie's going to give the uh, uh, I guess the good, the bad, the ugly. She's going to give us a review of uh, the uh, of how that meeting went, and we're going to pretty much try and benchmark that against previous years uh, that we had our local leadership conference at uh, Jefferson Community College. Of course, in March, from there, yeah, when the school was off. Really, why we we wanted to really do a deep dive on this is um, we're already starting our planning for 2023. And we really want to understand if the, the, the new venue at Turning Stone is was successful or we're getting our message out. It's, it's really our showcase event for the year. Is it really the right thing to do by having it there again? Or do we want to uh, you know, fall back to Jefferson Community College a month early or someplace else? Who knows? So we're going to be talking to Katie. I'll kind of give uh, uh, an overview of that. I think in your packets, they should give some of that information also. Um, Today, we also um, want to take a look uh, at a video conferencing policy. Um, I didn't get it for some reason, but um, I had an opportunity to read it earlier today. Uh, really, basically, what we're trying to accomplish here is that the ability to uh, <clears throat> hold meetings and, and, uh, and maintain a quorum and also have the ability for people that uh, unfortunately can't attend to these meetings in person to have it really a, 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 uh, the ability to, to view what's going on with the commission and our monthly meetings. Long story short, I hope you all had an opportunity to review it. It's pretty straightforward. Um, what we're really looking at also is I think the key here is that commissioners can could, uh, you know, uh, we really want the commissioners to be present uh, to, to hold a quorum, but if it's un unavailable or for some reason, there's extra ordinary circumstances where a commissioner could not attend it, but would want it to be able to attend by video. Uh, will their vote still count? And that's in essence the nuts and the bolts of this thing. Yeah, a couple of things to point out. Um, this is based on the, the change to public officers audit right. out of budget um, process. Um, and so this is replacing, you know, we're on a continuing resolution, if you will, to um, do these. Uh, remote meetings because of the uh, pandemic, but that's ending. So June 9th, we wouldn't be able to have people on the video participating as a as a full voting member of the board unless we do this policy. That's why we did this extra meeting. We remember we weren't really scheduled for our main meeting, uh, but we needed to have this in place. Uh, <clears throat> I will notice note that what Jan says is correct. Like we really need to have the most people in person if we at all possible. Because um, as you can see in the first 
first section under policy says the majority of the commission board members will meet from a publicly accessible location and the public will be allowed to participate via video conference the same as they would be able to attend in person so we need a quorum in person at publicly accessible location now that doesn't mean you all would have to be here but let's let's say roger you're going to join from home and we needed to have a quorum at publicly accessible locations your home address would have to be advertised as a place that the public could join which isn't really ideal for people <laughs> um so We'd still really like to have as many people. We would need to have as many people in person. But if you know Jerry's got to be in Florida because she's on vacation, but she still wants to, and she's the only one that's not able to join, we have a quorum here. She can join and, and, and vote as a member of the board. So I don't know if I'm explaining that very well, but that's kind of the whole whole reason behind having this policy is to allow us to still do some of that. My understanding is a person's name does not have to be. There, just the address. Yeah, I believe so. Physical location. Right. Okay. Little, it yeah. does maintain a little bit of privacy. Yes, Lee. Katie, I, I, I think you sort of hit upon this, but I think it bears uh, being explicit that um, this is more restrictive than the declarations we've been operating under during the COVID crisis period. Um, you know, there, it, it's not just sort of a blanket. You can have remote meetings. You do have to have special circumstances. Uh, and, and the notice provision is more explicit. So it, it's, it's rolling back a little bit more. Um, and I think it requires probably, unfortunately, a little more work on Katie's part to make sure it all gets organized uh, in advance of the meeting where you have uh, remote sessions and viewing because and part of that is because you have to have a place people can assemble uh, and you got to make sure you have your reasonings reason for having the remote meeting uh, clearly articulated so that the, going forward people can't question it and it's got some requirements for maintaining records and uh, the digital records of the meeting I believe for five years Katie I can't remember yes yep so it's, it's five days and it held for five years in video. It, yeah, it's not as not as easy as we've had it, uh, but it's not a complete rollback. So I just wanted to point that out. Thanks. Thanks for bringing clarity to that. Um, do we have any questions or comments on this proposed change? Got to do what we got to do. <laughs> That's the case. We'll, we'll just do, we'll go ahead here. I'd like to present uh, a draft video competency resolution. Where is the 2022 2023 New York State budget added public officers law 103A, which allows members of public bodies to participate in meetings via a video conference from a location that is not accessible to the public so long as certain conditions are met, including that a majority of the board meets from a publicly accessible location. And whereas the Tugo Commission is a, a, a public body within the means of public officers law 103A and whereas a commission desires that its commissioners be able to participate in meetings via video conference as allowed by the provision of public uh, officers law 103A. Now therefore the commission hereby authorizes its commissioners to participate in meetings using video conferencing technology in a manner consistent with public Officers Law 103A and the attached policy on video conferencing. Do I have a motion? I'll move to accept. Second. All those in favor? Everybody said aye. Thank you. I uh, hope you folks have all had the opportunity. Today's the last day to do your financial disclosure for the state of New York. I hope you all had a lot of fun and did it. <laughs> <laughs> I can't get on. It won't let you on. No. Okay. But you're going to have internet. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big deal. Yeah. I can work with you. I'm the one who's done this. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. <laughs> and, and Jan, did you get the email to your new address? Yes. I'm okay. I did it. I prompted them to send you. I appreciate it. Yeah. I didn't get it, so I assume I never changed my email. So. Yeah, exactly. I did. So. Yeah, that's good. So just. Uh, 
<clears throat> if you have it, please do do so. Um, you know, one of the things we, we continue to talk about is uh, forums and the ability to have representation from all areas in the, all counties uh, in our, uh, our stakeholders, stakeholders areas. Uh, we still are short some commission members. Uh, specifically right now, we're, we're short two governor's appointments. Um, as I think the only governor's appointment that's left is me, I, I understand the concerns with going through the, uh, the rigors of a governor's appointment. They do a lot of background checks. You gotta get fingerprinted. They do an FBI check. They do a state DCI check. Uh, it, it takes quite a bit of a long time to do that. But from a disclosure standpoint, um, I can understand why a governor's office would want uh, either a Democrat or a Republican would wanna make sure that whoever they're putting in place is, uh, is pretty much clean from any potential issues here. Um, we need two governor's appointments, uh, and specifically, I think that area-wise, we're still looking at Oneida County. Definitely one for Oneida, and then the other one for me from any other counties. Okay. So please, uh, yeah. if you have any anyone that's uh, that's uh, that's interested, bring bring it forward to Katie, bring it forward to me, and we'll. Uh, you know, I think it's important as a governor's appointment. Uh, we've had a few people that were interested in when I had sat them down. I didn't do a very good sales job on it. <laughs> and, uh, to be honest, <laughs> but rather get into the middle of it and say, "Whoa!" <laughs> you know, we rather be upfront with exactly what it takes to, to get to the governor's office here in, uh, in New York. So, uh, please, anybody that, that that has an interest that wants to serve the communities, uh, you know, through the commission, uh, let Kitty know, let me know, and, uh, and uh, we will. Uh, let them know whoever it is exactly what it takes to, to get through the governor's office here. So appreciate that. Um, you know, we're coming up on our August retreat again. You know, we've had a variety of retreats over the years, a lot of different places, uh, kind of showcasing different state parks. Um, we are really in the planning stage in August of how we're going to and where we're going to have our meeting. I just would like to solicit if there's any ideas. Um, you know, we've done it pretty much everywhere. Last year, we were in Oneida County at uh, Delta Lake. We've been in Oswego County. We have been in Lewis County. We've been everywhere. So, yeah. so it's pretty much. I don't think we need to hit a certain spot. I feel like we've been covering things pretty well. But yeah. So I any guess. ideas? Uh, you know, I think Katie you mentioned uh, the Osceola ski area. Yeah. One one idea. I think Angie mentioned it was there is the new cross-country ski place in Osceola um, that they've built in the last couple of years. It's a pretty nice facility. That location might lend itself well to having someone come in and talk to us about the new ownership um, on the, we call it the Mole Missile property, but it's not in North Blue Source. The whole East Branch of Fish Creek, the new landowner, maybe bring them in and have them talk to us about their goals for the property and that kind of thing. That's just one idea. I think Mike had mentioned um, there's a nice Oswego County Park that we could use. It's a county park um, if we wanted to be there. Uh, we had mentioned, I think, at one meeting, maybe bringing in a facilitator to do something if we wanted someone from the outside. I, you know, I haven't really had a lot of time to focus, so I really would love more ideas on this to help me <laughs> narrow down my thinking. Well, we got some time. Uh, to do this, but really the, the key for our, our retreat is not only to kind of kick back and, uh, and, and enjoy each other's company, but it is a meeting. Mm -hmm. And really what the focus of this meeting I look at is really uh, it's a strategic meeting to get together and say, hey, what do we want to do when we grow up? What are we going to look like in five years? What are we going to look like in 10 years from now? Is there going to be a commission in 10 years? So I really, you know, I like the idea uh, of the possibility of trying to bring a, uh, a facilitator and maybe to help us do some brainstorming. Um, you know, somebody that possibly has that, uh, you know, those talents, if you will, that, uh, that can kind of keep us uh, directed because we don't want these sessions again to turn into a pitch session about different areas. We're really looking at how can we can continue to serve our, uh, serve our communities our counties uh, moving forward and so i don't know if you have, if you have any ideas on that uh bringing somebody in to help us kind of uh, you know uh, help direct us 
Any questions on that? Let's move right into the executive director report. Okay, thank you. Uh, <clears throat> Few things: uh, the community recognition awards that we started last year. Uh, our second round is due this year. They're due by June first, so coming right up. Uh, I don't have any filled out completely applications yet. Had some inquiries, a couple of inquiries that were, were more focused on individuals, and that recognition award really isn't for an individual. It's for either a community group or a municipality. So I did go back to those people and say. If you can spin this, then as part of a bigger group, you know, please send it along. Um, so please, if you think of anything, if you know I give anybody, you know, we'd like to have a good number of applications to review. Uh, remember that the review committee for that is the five council of government chairs. Um, and Jan and I sit on that, but we really want them to weigh in for the most part. So remind for that. Uh, hiring, we um, have uh, one good candidate for the planner position. We did a remote interview with him uh, oof, a few weeks ago. Um, he is a graduating senior uh, from Santa College, and his emphasis is planning. Uh, so we're bringing him in for an in-person interview tomorrow. Uh, he graduated over the weekend, so he's going to come up, and we're going to sell ourselves and, and hope he works, you know, out in a personal uh, format, but he was very good on Zoom, seemed very you know, thoughtful and intelligent. He sent us some writing samples. He's doesn't, he's really looking for some GIS opportunities some skill development in GIS, and we certainly can oblige that. Um, so let's keep our fingers crossed that this gentleman uh, works out. Tell him there's no thicker than two <laughs> Well, actually, there is. I <laughs> Yeah. Yes, every staff member now has to do the background check that Jan um, Jan described. So Patricia and Taylor are our most recent folks. They're on there. They had to do it. They made it through. They're on. The, they got on board. So it can be done. Uh, so let's keep our fingers crossed. One of the meaty things to talk about today, as Jan uh, referenced, is our, our decision about the LGC in 2023. Uh, basically, it's you know JCC versus Turning Stone. You have a bunch of materials in your packet, um, and I'm hoping you're, uh, so there's one that says LGC 2023 options, which is where I tried to summarize what we've got on the table. There's also a bunch of other stuff in here. There's survey results from this year. Um, and I would say uh, they were pretty positive overall. And most people really were happy with the turning stone venue. The snow was out of our control. You know, that we, we couldn't help that. There's also a very colorful chart that shows our financial, our kind of summary financials from the past several years um, to help to help get your mind around that. Um, on the back of this LGC 2023 options, there's a couple of charts too that show our attendance over the past several years. And that is um, attendance by Council of Government. So you can see where people that are from the region are coming from, from a council perspective. And then we have a second one, in region, out, out of region uh, attendance. So these are all, it's a lot of information, but we were as a committee in the office trying to get our heads around all the different aspects because it is like you say our signature event for the year and we really work hard to do a good job at it we don't want to see it diminish or anything like that um you know we were at a loss this year we were at a, a, a you know almost eighty five hundred dollar loss we expected we wouldn't do as well as we've done in the, in the past and the goal is really not to make money, although you will see we have made money in the past. And we that was keeping the registration rate really low, but we were, had very good exhibitors and sponsors and a lot of people attended. So um, this year, I think it was a combination of a little bit lower attendance, which COVID still out there, different venue. Also, no, but they were already <laughs> registered by then. So let me tell you, we had a few people that wanted their money back because of either they couldn't come because of the snow or they couldn't come because they, they had Caught COVID right beforehand, and we're like, sorry, you know, but that's just not the well, a couple upset people. So if you run into them, <laughs> we're trying to be very kind, but you know, those things are out of our control. If we had given money back to everybody who couldn't come because of the snow, you'd be looking at like a minus, you know, fifteen thousand dollar, yeah, because you you've incurred those costs by then. You can't get it back. Um, and turning stone is more expensive. 
I mean, uh, the food is more expensive. We have hotels that we don't normally have. Um, but who knows what JCC would have been this year. The food would have been more for sure. We probably wouldn't have had nearly the hotel costs. But, you know, it's hard because there's a three, well, there's a, a three-year gap here. And so you have to assume there would have been things changing in those two years had it been normal. Um, the options we have on, have kind of scoped out for you. There's two turning stone options and two JCC options. The turning stone options, uh, the first would be Wednesday, April 5th and Thursday, April 6th, which is right before Easter. But this is, these are the two days that they can give us the overnight hotel rooms at the state rate of $96 a night, which is significantly less than the $169 a night. I mean, there's a big savings just there. Um, there's some minimums on food, there's minimums on comp conference rental. You'll also notice that they want us to guarantee 45 rooms. This year, we only had to guarantee 23 rooms, I think, because they make their money in large part on the number of hotel rooms that they're, mm -hmm. it's not just, the food and the conference room fees is the hotel rooms. Um, so, so, and then we've thought about different ways that we can play with the format to encourage overnight attendance to, you know, get some of those rooms that they're looking for. Um, maybe doing a specialized training the afternoon before on a different topic, like drones or something. It would be kind of a standalone afternoon session, separate from our normal tracks the full day. Um, playing around with the way we do the speaker's dinner versus the, the, um, the reception, poss and possibly increasing the registration fee a little bit to hopefully, you know, buffer our losses. The second option is turning stone, but it's in May, May 4th and 5th, Thursday and Friday, but they can't give us state rate those dates. So we're back up to the high hotel room rate. GCC, there's two options. Uh, our normal Wednesday, where we set up and Thursday, we hold the conference is not available because the Harlem Girls Globetrotters are coming to JCC on that Wednesday. So they can't let us use the space the Wednesday before, you know. So we, we need to be a Thursday and a Friday at JCC, which would be Friday conference, Thursday set up, or it would be Monday, Tuesday, Monday set up, Tuesday conference, the 27th or the 28th. Um, so that's kind of what we have on the table. Uh, I'd love to hear some, I have my own thoughts on what, what I would recommend we will go with, but I'd love to hear maybe some input from all of you first or conversation about what you're thinking. I, when I was wandering around um, talking with some of the sponsors, there were several that were very interested in hosting a reception the night before, like CNS and, and mm -hmm. You know, they just would really like the opportunity to do that. So I think the idea of doing a, either one or two session in the afternoon prior would work out really well. They would love to do the reception. And yeah, that's one of the things I, I kind of looked at and agree with uh, Tom is that uh, you know, rather than have a sit down dinner the night before, uh, some of the vendors and some of the uh, Facilitators basically um, would have liked to, to have an opportunity to sit with us, and I think it would have been great instead of a dinner meeting to get a cocktail hour and buy your own drinks. But guess what? We're going to just do more appetizers or hors d'oeuvres, so you can get a bigger bang for your buck. You can get you know, some people that were staying in the hotels that we didn't even know were there the night before, and you know get everybody to participate. We could do really what the goal is networking. So, you know, I think we could save some some, some money there. My opinion is I like the venue. I think uh, uh, we got our feet wet, and, and I, I, I prefer it to Jefferson Community College. I know people have to travel, but you'll be surprised the amount of people that spent the night that came to that event the night before and stayed in the hotel. So, um, you know, I think it's, uh, I think we, we need to continue and just improve on what we have. Again, I spoke with a lot of attendees and but most of the people that spent the night, the municipalities paid for their lodging. It wasn't a personal expense. That's okay. And I guess the one question I have about that, if, if I go representing the town of Watertown, do I get the state rate? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But what, we, you would if we can do it that, that April 5th and 6th. Right. And we, you would, we would tell them to say, say you're there with the local government conference and then they would get the state rate. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Great. 
that as long as people are aware of that, because mm -hmm. I know the two gals from down in Watertown stayed someplace else because of the cost. Yeah, and this year we didn't get state rates. So we were very careful when we were talking about 2023 to see if there was an opportunity to get state rate because of that. The vast majority of people I talked to really liked this thing. Nobody, other than the snow, nobody complained about the travel time at all. We do have to work on uh, Tom Boxberger's uh, gambling skills. <laughs> hey, I'm the winner. <laughs> You witnessed that. You witnessed that. Leona, <laughs> you were there. I, I wouldn't say I prefer it over JCC, but it was nice. Mm -hmm. It was it was nice, but I was appalled at the price of the hotel. Mm -hmm. And I thought, I don't know how towns can afford to send their people mm -hmm. if it's going to cost that much. So if we can't do it and get the state rate, I don't think we should do it. <clears throat> I think it's probably a good idea to skip a big, heavy dinner. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think you could do that at no cost because you could get a couple of the sponsoring companies to, to yeah. pay for that. Yeah. 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 And I think really, if we did the evening before, we would do a reception at the end of the day, day of. Because mm -hmm. I've always been nervous about that. People are drinking and then they're yeah. leaving. This way, they're going to have the reception the night before. Hopefully, they're spending the night. There's not any of that concern. So yeah, I, I think we could cover it. People could pay their own drinks though, like you mm -hmm. said, which is a good idea. And then it would eliminate the secret dinner costs out of us and then it gets sponsored by somebody else. So. How was the, uh, the, the after, uh, what do you call it, is a cocktail the reception? The reception. I unfortunately got tied up with the marijuana guy. Yeah. Talking about that. Explain that. Wait a second. Wait a second. I have been fingerprinted and it's okay. It's legal now. Oh, is it? Oh, we had no conference on it. I would say the reception was kind of odd because they had it in all four corners and that space is too big for the number of people we get for the reception. So it would have been better if it would have been kind of more at one end. Um, so many people there? It was all right, but not as many because I don't think we usually get. And I didn't, we, none of us really cared for the way they were handing out the orders. Like they were served by like people walking around. We'd rather have it all together. Okay, yeah. You know, um, and if we go back to Turning Stone, it's going to be a little bit different setup. I don't think we're going to be in that huge event center. There's some other rooms. There was a lot of back and forth this last week, but we'll, we'll work on that. That's all details, but yeah. There's Usually at Jefferson Community College, we have to, you know, we have to kick out the final people, which is always the contingency from Camden. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I do think still work in a bus. <laughs> <laughs> I think the snow was still at play at the end of the day, honestly, because it was not even fun driving home that night. Yeah. So I think people were looking like, I just want to get home before yeah. dark. Yeah. yeah. So there's a couple of changes that yeah. you know, actually would, uh, that would help us to you know, if we can save money on. You're, you know, if you're in Watertown, you're going to spend all the ninety-six dollars for a hotel room in Watertown. Yeah. So if we can, you know, get state rate on that, and then, you know, a, a big ticket item is that dinner. Yeah. Yeah. We can kind of work around that. You know. Yeah, I agree. It sounds good. Okay. Yeah, that's kind of how I felt. Like you need to give it another year. Yeah. I mean, one year's worth. There's so much. Like, you know, so many wrinkles you're working through in one year. Um, let's try it again. Let's tweak some stuff. See how it goes, and then judge again after a second year of experience. The other thing is, you know, no, you know, there's a lot of people at the what conference room may be. Yeah, that's not going to happen. All that stuff yeah, that was crazy. eliminate yeah. that. Yeah. You know, better marketing on the rooms. Yep. People were looking for you know, yep. so they had to walk through a conference yeah. to get to yeah. the room. Yeah, yeah, we didn't realize it was going to be like that. Yeah. And it, well, and yeah, if they if they want us to take more rooms, say no walkthroughs. No, it's not. It's going to be yeah. We've already had that conversation. So, yeah, because so, so, a lot of people talked. It was awkward. It was awkward having to walk through, and yeah. My sense is the end of the funky tree and direct. Casino patrons are where they're going. <laughs> I noticed that. They're, they're asking, yeah. well, you guys are all dressed up. You must, you must work here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, 
was just <laughs> picking up directions in order to find the room. Yeah. 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 yeah, I had no problem, but I was getting all sorts of casino questions. I'm like, I have no idea. People ask me where restaurants are. I'm like, I don't know. I don't work here. And there was a bathroom, a bathroom giveaway yeah. that day. Like people were coming with like and they were trying to find this fancy bathroom that they were giving away. <laughs> <laughs> so I I wouldn't vote to approve Turning Stone unless Tom agrees to help me with my gambling. <laughs> For a commission, I will do that. <laughs> we know that he won eleven cents. Now <laughs> what I found when I cashed it, it was sixteen cents. All right. <laughs> I said um, through three of the four sessions and the sessions that I picked through. I don't know if I just picked them right. They were well. They were done well. Yeah. They were very uh, done very well. So I was pretty pleased. <clears throat> okay, so it sounds like we have consensus to go with the April fifth and sixth attorney stone and tweak some things and and see how we can. Make. How was the park? Parking was awesome. It was in a garage. I mean, you don't walk outside at all, okay. which was nice in the stuff. Oh yeah. That's one of the things that a lot of people said. It was nice not yes. going building to building. Yes. Yeah. We're probably going to want to do something a little different with the way we give out the certificates. Because um, we were, you know, we try not to be the certificate of attendance. We don't want to be the police on those, but, you know, we do know some folks didn't go to all their sessions and spend some time at the casino. So we're going to have to do something about that. Like, I don't know. I don't know yet, but. And That's if you want to break the system, they're going to break it, you know, but yeah, we just have to yeah. have a little bit more uh, check in on that. Okay. All right. That sounds good to me. Um, that's, that's what I always used to say about superintendents of schools objecting to people going to conferences. Because if they did what teachers do when they go to conference, they wouldn't object to it, but they don't. They have parties and they they go do whatever. They don't necessarily care about the conference at all. Yeah. Every session I sat in was was a capacity. Yeah. You know, I, which I was kind of surprised. I thought we kind of left some room for. But every session I sat in, it was Beautiful. standing room only. Well, you must pick the popular ones. There were some that were lower attendance, and we were looking at that too. And and Canada's one was a big one. Yeah. There were a lot of How many people actually registered? Uh, we had about 550. Mm -hmm. I, I don't have, and that was, that does, that includes speakers and exhibitors too. That's not just purely, you know, our local official attendees. So was that down? A little bit? It was down, yeah. About 150 ish. I really believe that next year it'll build back up a bit. And once the word of mouth gets around that it actually worked. Yeah. How much of a problem was it to move everything down? Well, we ended up renting two vehicles, mm -hmm. um, big, like a, a minivan and a big SUV to put all this, because we do take a lot of crap down there. Um, so that was a little bit more expensive, you can see. and. I mean, it wasn't, it was just, you have to move it. So it doesn't matter. You're moving, but you're moving it an hour and a half versus 10 minutes. So yeah, that was a little bit more. And, you know, tables and all that stuff is, we have to they handle that. that stuff they yeah, handle but we're, you know, we're bringing, you know, um, the signs, the sandwich boards, we're bringing all the name tags, we're bringing all the giveaway, the, all the folders with the, the um, program in them. And, other miscellaneous things in our exhibit. We brought our exhibit, you know, so that's pretty big. But, you know, I turn my bag in. Get it thrown in that tub. All right, you can give it to me. I will. Okay. Um, uh, this was a, a late thing. I didn't have a chance to talk to um, Jan about this, but uh, the Northern Border Regional Commission, which we all have talked about over the over the years, it's federal commission. They have grants that they give out on an annual basis. Um, includes, you know, the four northern border states. Uh, includes all of Tug Hill. Uh, we have had a request uh, from the Turin Ridge Riders, which is one of the snowmobile clubs, both of the snowmobile club, um, to consider being the, the administrator of their northern border regional commission grant if they receive it. They're uh, 
applied, um, they, they submitted a letter of intent. So the process is you submit a letter of intent to the commission, to the Northern Borders Commission, and they tell you whether you're going to give a full, put in a full application or not. So their letter of intent was approved. So they have to put a full application in by middle of June. And you have they have to have somebody who will administer the grant. And typically in other places in the state and the other states, there's economic development districts that are set up and they exist. And that's automatically who becomes the administrator of the grants in these different counties. However, Jefferson and Lewis do not belong to an economic development district. It's been an issue for a long time. Um, and so the two organizations that are listed as possibilities for organizations applying for those grants are the Development Authority of the North Country and the Tucko Commission. Now, we have never administered one of these grants. We talked about it at a board meeting many years ago about just in general would we be, would be willing. And at that point, the board was not interested. We were down staff. Now we have a request from a specific entity for a specific project. And I wanted to bring it to you to see what you would think. Um, there would be a small fee that the commission would be able to, you know, offset some costs to be around six thousand dollars to 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 do this. Um, we've never administered one of these grants, so I can't say for sure how much effort it's going to be. Um, however, you know, this is in our wheelhouse. It's a grant to purchase a snowmobile groomer and to work with landowners. Basically, there are two major arteries that connect Hug Hill. In Brandingham, in the Adirondacks in Brandingham, through this area. And one of them is getting shut down because the landowners don't want anything to do with it anymore, which will leave one main trail. And the, and the club is very concerned that all the traffic that's now going to be on this one main trail is going to irritate those landowners, and that's going to get closed off. And then you have no connection, direct connection right here between the Adirondacks and Tug Hill for snowmobiling. So the grant ask is to create another trail with willing landowners. They've already got the landowners lined up, is my impression, my understanding. Um, buy a new, two new groomers, one expensive thing and one small thing. I can't remember exactly. I've got it in here. Um, and it's like a $380,000 grant. They have to um, have 25% match. So it would be about $330,000 they'd be getting from the northern border. Regional Commission with their match on the table to make this happen in the next couple of years. So I thought I'd bring it to the board to see what you think. Um, my, my thoughts on this are it would be beneficial in some ways because I think it would build a better relationship between us and the Northern Border Regional Commission. We would get to know them better and it might position us to be better, to, to do better getting those that money to our region in the future. Recreational trails are more in our wheelhouse. If it was a sewer or a water or some other kind of project that is eligible under that, I would say, nah, the development authority really is a better place to do that because they do sewer and water, they got engineers. But we've been involved in snowmobiling for so long. We just did the economic impact study last year, which I think is what actually is making them maybe get this grant because they can point to the economic impact study and say, this is big money. Northern Border Commission, please invest in this. Um, so I think, I think it fits in our wheelhouse a little bit more, but I can understand on the other side, concern about staff time, um, and how much will this be involved. And so I would think this might be a good trial to see what would it be involved. And then we could decide in the future, do we want to do this or not? So that's the request. And I, I was wondering what you all thought. So two of this turn the dryers. What's the 400 K for? It's for a groomer. Hold on. Um, so trail clearing and excavation, bridge materials, trail signage, trail stakes, a piston bully 400 10 foot 6 inch model, a D Dubai D trail groomer, volunteer labor, which is I think their match. Um, and that's what it is. The groomer itself at this symbol is $298,000. This plug will be cut up to compensate the landowners. Um, I did not read that in this in the verbiage. No, I do not believe it's to compensate them. I think it is so to do any any trail work that needs to be done on the private property. So there's no cost to landowners, but I don't think they're getting compensated. And as administrator, if uh, their deal with landowners falls apart, how are we? 
I think we're just the paperwork. You know, we're not like the decider. The Northern Border Regional Commission would still be a decider. Of, oh, your project fell apart. Well, then you got to do X, Y, and Z. We would just be doing the paperwork, communicating. I think between the two entities. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how much involvement we really have in the actual project. You know, just some help. They are the, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see us being kind of the prompter and labor <laughs> experts. Yes, it's our time. Yeah. The piston bully is the groomer, and the the other thing is probably a drag. Yeah, and you're right. Trail grooming drags maintain trail and ensure a safe operating conditions, and that's fifty thousand dollars. Drags behind the. Yeah. I've been involved with some administrative oversight you know, where it seems like there's a lot more required than would be here. This doesn't seem like it would involve a huge amount of time. It's pretty limited in scope and dollars are pretty limited and already pre-focused. So I, you know, if you think it's manageable, I think it would be a good experience to have the commission participate in and build some bridges literally as well as figuratively. <laughs> I will say we've been involved since this the economic impact study was completed. Lewis County has, has put together a snowmobile action committee. We've been to two meetings so far. It's a group of club members, business owners, local Lewis County government type people, us uh, talking about what can be done to maintain and improve the whole snowmobile uh, experience in this county. There's a lot of talk about safety. Um, everybody's very aware of the accidents that happen in this county. We talk about land owner issues because that, that, you know, so we're at the, that table, you know, we're participating, we're coming up with ideas. So I, I do think this blends well and things we're already doing. It's not like some out of the ballpark kind of Sounds like if we can develop a relationship with other borders, that's a big key. Katie? Yes. Um, I am inherently conservative when the commission takes on new, uh, new roles. Um, I, do, I just gave a quick glance to the enabling legislation, and I, I do think it's within the scope of what the legislature approved. I guess my concern is um what the agreement looks like between you and the receiving organization rights and responsibilities and i got to be obvious a complete push of all liabilities for anything that comes from this to the grantee and not to the commission as administrator um i mean you guys can decide the workload but if something happens you don't want you know, it's unfortunate on the trail. You don't want them to start looking for deeper pockets. Um, and while our pockets have never been that deep in the budget, they are deeper. Um, and so, so I guess that's my only real concern once you decide uh, how it works out in terms of uh, administrative burden on the commission staff. Actually, that was my, my next question is, is there a contract? I'm sure there is. And I, I, I can look into that and I can get more detail. I literally this came up Thursday and I was off Friday, so. That would probably be the starting point yeah. of this thing. And so, you know, they're, 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 you're talking, they need to have this thing completed by June 15th. The, the full application. So they haven't even been secured the grant. They just got their letter of intent approved. So now they have to put a full application in. So I could find that out. I'm sure pretty quickly what they're doing. I would not have a problem with this. You, you, you're the executive director, you know what workload is, but, but my personal opinion is that, you know, if we receive that agreement, there's gotta be one sound, hold us harmless, indemnifying uh, everybody else but yeah. <laughs> and us. Yeah. Uh, 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 any actions on behalf of the commission or any action of commission of, on, on behalf of the, the folks that are we're actually doing the grant for, if you can get a copy of that to, to leave, yeah. I'm, I might be okay with that. Absolutely. What's your thoughts? I agree. Roger, do you know any of the people involved with the club? No. I'll do that circle. The main this person is I've been talking to is Chris Skipper. Chris Skipper, does that mean you sound familiar? Katie, this is Mickey. Um I've actually had Brandingham reach out to me because they're working with Turn 
uh, Ridge Riders about extending the trail because Brandingham was going to be grooming from the railroad bed up to Lover's Lane. And they're submitting that trail proposal to Jackie over at Lewis County for approval right now because um, they asked me if I could do that new trail form that goes up to Lover's Lane from the railroad bed. Do you guess that? Okay. I just wanted to let you know that I know they're working with Brandingham on that too. Well, that's good to hear that they're working with both of us. Okay. So I will get a copy of the actual agreement that if this happened, we would be signing and run by Lee. Okay. Sounds good to me. Thank you. Thank you, Lee. Sorry I didn't run this by you. <laughs> um couple of other small things, the 50th anniversary, we talked about that at the last meeting a little bit. We have confirmed tailwater for October 19th, 2023. And I know it seems like a long time away, but tailwater dates go fast and uh, wanted to get that taken care of. Um, Is that a Thursday? Right? It's Thursday. I know, I'm sorry. Uh, a couple other things we've got. <laughs> Uh, just kind of percolating is I've asked Bob McNamara to take a look at our logo to do a little 50th anniversary thing to it um, to use during the year of our anniversary. Uh, I have also, I just think I, I put it, it was separate from your folder as a piece of paper, uh, one, one side of the piece of paper with a proposal. Let's see if I can find it. My papers are all messed up. About a possible partnership with WPBS. Yes. Yep. I'll park it, Tug Hill. I don't know if you all see the PBS station out of Watertown, but they have been doing some really, really neat things. Um, they did a Adirondack Park It half hour documentary uh, back in 21. They did a really cool Jefferson County history thing uh, a couple of years ago. I, I know the executive director was there pretty well. And I had talked to him about, about the idea of doing something about Chuck Hill. Um, he, uh, and he thought that would be a great idea. It would fit into their mission and this, this series that they already have called Target. So he just got this to me over the weekend. Um, the concept, um, the timing and the cost, this would be, we would be able to do this to come out right around the time of the anniversary dinner. So it would kind of be another little thing we'd be doing special the cost he's got here in the range of 60 to 75 thousand dollars but when i met with him a couple of weeks ago he felt pretty confident about the grant funding and says that is here right now that they are clued into a lot of different grant sources to, to fund this kind of thing and that they would even be putting you know some of their time on the table so there might be some small amount that we would be funding on this but i think it was mostly grant funded working with bs so um and this is early days, but I wanted you to see that and see what you thought. Um, we would end up developing an MOU uh, about how this would work if you all think that's an important or an interesting good thing to do. And I would work with Lee on that as well. And it would happen in 2023. Yeah. It would start filming in the fall of 2022 because he really wants to get you know three or four seasons. So get the Get the color in the fall, get the winter, gotta have a lot of winter in there and get some green stuff in the, in the spring and early summer. Uh, a lot of drone video or drone footage he would use. It, it, and it would be a half hour documentary, but the way they do it these days is there's little pieces that you can pull out of them to use as different venues. This is all social media. So there'd be a, I think we'd be getting pieces of video we could use on our YouTube or on our you know Facebook, that kind of thing. We'd be using the ref guide, I think, as the basis for a lot of that, which has a lot of good material in it already. They talk about doing interviews with a variety of people. So it would be a combination of scenery and describing places and interviewing people. I think it would be really pretty neat. We've been doing our, our, our um, webinars have been great, but they're not like high quality productions. There's a lot of really good information in there, and they, they, they serve a great purpose, but this would be more of a polished you know, thing for television. <laughs> There are a lot of those out there on the Adirondacks, and they tend to focus on a little bit, you know, Racket Lake or something like that. And they're really exceptional. I think it'd be great to have that kind of publicity. And that, like you say, high quality. High quality, yeah. Make sure they they remember the the one they did years ago 
a long time ago. Yeah. Yes, I remember that one too. Yeah. We had to pull that off the shelf. I think I have it on VHS tape in the right. library. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but it would be good. Maybe there'd be even something to pull from that. I don't know. Right. Good point. They came and did a thing up at the Hall of Fame last week. Yeah. Oh. Uh, it's a, I can't remember the name of the program because I don't get. Yeah. Um, but it's on at seven o'clock once a month or something. Mm -hmm. And it'll be on that. But it's only about seven minutes or so. But it will give us some publicity. Okay. So any other ideas for the 50th anniversary, please send them my way. I just would really like to try to make it special. I was thinking maybe at the at the dinner in October that year of having some speakers. Um, I don't know if there's anyone from back in the early days of the commission that we could bring in to kind of elevate it a little bit. The one thought I had, but I was trying to think who was there and who's still around. Um, Maybe John too. I mean, I, I think you know he was a pretty important senator. You know, different different levels of involvement with us. I think he's retired and he's in Florida now, but I don't know if he comes up anymore. He's still got connections in the Yeah, Yeah, so he might be a really top notch person to have come say a few things. Uh, maybe have some of our local that was there way back when all this was happening to talk about. What they remember about the early days of the commission and talk about it now. Um, I don't know, just to have it be a special and have that kind of bigger perspective of where the commission was and where we are now. You know, I just think it would be really nice to have a program that, you know, maybe just do a slide of, you know, so many people were brought up through the title commission and come out to a lot of different things and been very successful. And just be nice to have a slide or something that shows all the people that at one time or another, if they were interns or they worked there for a council of government or whatever, and just, there's a long list of people. There is. And it could be people that, you know, passed away too. But just doing alumni, this is this is something that we've done, you know what yeah. I mean? So yeah. and then the other thing is let's look at maybe uh, if there's like the Betty Adlers, those kind of people, maybe. That, that speak very well. Maybe they want to say a few words as being retired for 30 years of the commission, but they remember when it's 72. Yeah. <laughs> she comes, she comes on 79. She comes to the yes. Yeah. 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 Or what's a hunt from uh, Florida? Yeah. 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 He's been retired 10 years now. Is it Hunt? Steve Hunter. Yeah. He's been retired longer than 10 years. Oh, yeah. 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 So, yeah. There's a lot of things we could do, but let's make it special. Yeah. Let's make this uh, event special. Okay. Um, so another thing, I'll, now I'm going to find another piece of paper. I'm very happy to do today. Uh, and also, uh, I have to interrupt. Yeah, go ahead, Bob. Well, commission members of the past. Yeah. I think Jerry would be the best, sir. Yeah. 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 I was hoping there was a window there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no glance. <laughs> Somewhere here, I have. So we last year, you might recall, we uh, we exhibited at three of the four county fairs. It was the first time we done taking our, ourselves to the county fairs, and we thought that was a pretty good experience, and we want to do that again. Um, and I have a, a calendar here somewhere, if I could find it, of signups. Uh, if you all would like to sign up for a slot somewhere, if you can't, that's not a problem. We just started putting this together. Taylor did some recon for me. So when I find it, I will hand, oh, here it is. I put it somewhere. So um, all four counties are holding their fair this year. So that's a, that's a good thing. Um, speaking of county was the one that did. So here's, don't have to sign up now, but here's the dates. So and there's a couple calendars in there. Um, we will draw on lots of different volunteers, but and there's none of them conflict, which is good. Um, okay, a couple other things. Minimum maintenance roads, it's not moving, it's not going anywhere this year. Um, I, I got a communication from Assembly Woman Gunther's office that she, it's just not going to make it out of pity again. I have not been able to have a conversation with her office yet. Um, I will just 
and I'm not trying to make excuses, but it's been a very weird year with all the redistricting and then the challenges to the maps and all. It's, it, it, and it's, it just spent a year here. Um, and I did talk to Caleb Ganowicz. She gave me some great ideas moving forward. I think we got to wait and see where all the maps settle out and who our representatives are going to meet from next year because that's all up in the air. So that's kind of where I'm at. It's just kind of let's let it cool off for a little bit, regroup after election, and when we know who's who, and it will go from there. So a little bit, of, <laughs> you know. Yeah, it's craziness. Um, I I prefer if I were to sit at one of the fairs, not have that stupid question there. Oh yeah, we won't do that this year. No, 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 no. So. No, we won't have the questionnaire. They'll have our little trivia wheel if you want it, but you wouldn't have to do it. I'll well, yes. that's okay. <laughs> yeah. that, that questionnaire, people would look at it. Strange. Yeah, <laughs> yep, yep, that's fine. No, that's, that's, we'll set that aside. A um, couple of other things, rose analysis. You have a map in here, and this is something that uh, Matt and Angie and myself have been working on and we've been talking with Lewis County folks, um, Larry Dahlhoff, Tim Hunt, Brian Shea, uh, Josh Lemaker. After the whole proposal about Flat Rock and the paving, and there's been a lot of conversations about roads in, in Lewis County and Lewis and County government has some ideas of things they want to do. They're coming to CTHC Thursday night to talk about some of their ideas and they want to get some input. Um, and we put together some mapping um, to kind of just frame some of the information around around it. So this is the first time actually that we put zoning maps next to each other from different communities and, and Matt kind of categorized them. So you can see what things look like across town boundaries. Um, and that blob in the middle is the core forest on um, that special area that all of those towns have adopted a map for. Um, and then we've got roads in there. It's, it's a little hard to read at this size, and there's just a lot of information on here, but I just wanted you to all see it and know we were doing this, this kind of analysis. We've got town roads that are open to both ATVs and snowmobiles on here. We've got minimum maintenance roads, local official roads, and zoning. Um, we'll see how Thursday goes. I think Jan's coming for, as a commissioner, so he'll be there to hear um, what the conversation is. But um, just some interesting stuff that you know, we can do and uh, we'll see what the proposals are from the Lewis County after this meeting. Anything else we should add to that, Angie? This, I mean, we could talk about that for an hour, but I just wanted you to be aware more than anything. Um, but yeah, Thursday night at the Steak and Room here in Turin. And the last thing I will mention is Blackbird Watershed Conference coming up on June 8th. And I know Jerry signed up to go. go. I didn't send anything in. You're fine. You got covered. Okay. Um, and that's going to be at the new uh, facility in Lions Falls, Three Willows. So that'll be our first time having an event there. Uh, looking forward to it. And that's, and that's that. behind the works. Right? Yeah. I'll let you go first. That's all I have. Thank you, Angie. Uh, <clears throat> Council Governor Report. All right. Well, uh, obviously, there's a lot of council in my area. So there's a lot going on. <laughs> I'll get the highlights. Uh, Phillips Adams has got a really active playground committee. They're working on a big playground project, Jen. Um, and I think Taylor from our office has been working with their committee. Um, so they're they're uh, going to put some of their ARPA money towards that. They've done a ton of fundraising, so that's pretty exciting. I think that should be a neat project. And we're in Adams next month, so yes, I mean, uh, see if maybe uh, I'll have Jen and I will see if we can set something up with looking at that. That'll be neat. Um, uh, we've got we've got quite a bit of shifting, but we have Donna Dahl up here, who is the new, somewhat new mayor of Lions Falls since last fall. Because their mayor resigned, and also that shuffled, they had a couple of trustees. Uh, well, one that this, there was one vacancy, and then they had to resign. So Lions Falls has got a new mayor and two new trust. Well, one new old trust, old new trustee, whatever, and one new new trustee. <laughs> <laughs> We've been some shuffling there. Um, we just heard the uh, 
this in the April meeting that Council Bill's mayor is resigning effective end of this month. The new lady that's going to take over there was at the meeting, and I think it's coming to CPAC, so I haven't met her yet. Um, and they also took off the trustee and had to report to head of vacancy bill. Fort Lyon also has a new mayor since the last election, and uh, they have one trustee that's got one term under her belt, and then they have a brand new trustee, and then they have a resignation, so they have a really new trustee. So, been a lot of shuffling in the villages here lately, um, but I think I think finally everybody's settled down, hopefully. Uh, uh, at the end of last month, well, the ARPA fund, funding reports, the COVID money were due um, on April 30th, and all of our uh, Town villages, of course, are annual reporters. So I spent the end of April going hither and down, as I'm sure John did, trying to help the town villages get their first report done. Um, so, so that was interesting. Okay, me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I think I think well, anybody that asked for help, I got we got through, and I I, I took some phone calls and stuff. So I think most everybody at least got there. And Um, Martinsburg, Kate mentioned the stuff going on on Flat Rock Road, which has picked up all the, the conversation we're having with Lewis County about roads. But also, um, of course, they have uh, a couple wind projects and they have a bunch of solar projects and new um, assessing method for the renewable projects has really put things in turmoil in a lot of our towns and villages that have these projects. The new assessing method and a lot of them is lowering the, their value lower than what their pilots are saying that they should be paying um there's talk about statewide talk about lawsuits there are lots and there are lawsuits filed our, i mean our towns have been talking about not joining lawsuits because it's really messed with the pilot stuff and martinsburg specifically roaring brook which is the new wind farm is up and moving but it's still in testing um, the understanding in Martinsburg from what they heard from the IDA is they would start paying their pilot this year and they are not going to. Um, there's also two solar two solar projects in Martinsburg who um, messed around, messed around, pushing things out and didn't sign their final agreements until after tax and status day. So Martinsburg also thought that those were going to start paying this year and they are not. Right now, Martinsburg is $180,000 short of anticipated revenue that they were expecting to come in. So they're doing some shuffling. Um, gas fuel at Lewis County is trying to at least get solar ones straight around because it was it was a blatant uh, maneuver to not have to pay this year. So uh, so Martinsburg is, is doing some shuffling to figure out what's going to go on there. And then, and then to make that with they had the flat rock road situation go on as well. So things have been luckily they have a they have a board that has not changed much luckily. So that's that's good, I guess. Um, Osceola is working uh, through the minimum maintenance world classification process. Uh, we're doing the best that we can to, to at least get them protected under home rule law because we cannot get this stuff removed in the state. Um, so they have adopted the first the enabling legislation uh, with top findings uh, from our superintendent this, this month with the, uh, the board. So they're setting stuff out to do the minimum maintenance world process. Uh, second. So they're part way through that, which is uh, good news. Uh, Town of Ward also, I think, is going to be starting that process. Um, I, they have a fairly new library superintendent that I've got to talk. I've talked briefly to the board about it a couple of times, but I think Ward, that's, I think, might be the last one of Ward Towns that they can do that for us. So uh, Redfield, uh, as most of, well, some of you probably know, their supervisor, John Year, who passed away last fall, or this spring, she's. <laughs> District this spring, um, their deputy supervisor works for the state DOT, so he had to make sure the JCO that he was not going to be in conflict and that he was clear. He's an engineer, um, so he got the okay finally from the state that it was okay for him to serve as supervisor and in his state position. So they appointed him as supervisor, and of course, that he was a board member, so that was the board vacancy, and they did that also. So Redfield has got their people straightened back around, I believe. <laughs> um, they continue to have issues with uh, one of the phone no clubs that operates in Redfield. So uh, yeah, they're they're working on amending their snowmobile law and also the MOU that they have with 
to some of the clubs because they have the same idea of collaboration from the other club. Uh, town of Elgin Turin, uh, the village here has water. Um, they have a bunch of outside users that are not districted. So they have uh, spoken to the town about, um, about forming an outside district. Uh, the school, which is one of their biggest users, is not, a, they're an outside user. So they're trying to get straight around because they just want to apply for some water grants and outside users who can do that. So hopefully they'll be able to help them get through that process. Um, and the uh, bank is doing a comprehensive plan for the village. Uh, they have some community, they have to go work on a community survey right now. So that's in the process. Um, I have been uh, making the rounds, introducing Kelly, our new associate. Uh, Beth and I have been making the rounds. She lives in Watson. So that is even farther this way than Beth. So I had to do some shuffling of the schedule. Um, so Beth is picking up a couple meetings that she didn't use to cover, cut full and head towards Jefferson County. And I, I swung that way a little bit. So um, things seem to be going very well. She's sitting around running, so I'm happy about that. I've got a couple more meetings to go to with her to introduce her to the boards. Um, we have a bunch of towns and villages working on solar law stuff, Pennsylvania, Vermont, the US, so a lot of Florence coming up. Uh, we're just working on updating the zoning law. They were working with Helena before she went out, and now they're working with Matt. They seem to be moving along good, so that's that's good. Um, big project wise, uh, most of our towns have done their official roadmaps several years ago, but I'm not positive that all, that all of them were filed correctly. Um, so we're going back through and starting to update the official roadmaps and go through the process to make sure everybody adopts them correctly. And also we have many comp plans for all of them that were done with the last time we updated the, the big CPHC plan. So I got to finish getting the resolutions adopted for those. So those are my two big regional things that I've got going on. As Katie mentioned, our spring dinner is coming up Thursday. Um, and Lewis County is going to talk about their growing plants that should be interesting. What are you doing in your spare time? And that's what I'll let Donna report from Lion's Falls if she's got any other news. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of buildings have infrastructure upgrades and projects going on to their stuff with the DECs, that's a really disinfection requirement. Yes. So all of them are having to do some upgrades. Mm -hmm. Are the villages mostly three member boards or five member boards? Okay. I have a mixed bunch. The mm -hmm. village of Turin, it has three. Lyons Falls, Port Leiden, and Turin are five. And Adams is seven. Any questions? Mr. Yeah. 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 do you have anything while you're here? For, no, you're here. close to a night. Yeah. 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 Yep, so you've got two, you've got um, the 21, 22, uh, almost year end before. I think there's still probably a few expenses that need to be um, rectified still, so, but uh, pretty self explanatory. We were way under our, um, our budget this year. Um, so uh, it's all, it all looks pretty good. Then the 2022-23, uh, this is your first financial statement from the current fiscal year. So that hopefully it uh, reflects the adopted budget that you all approved in April. Uh, I will say that we ha have um, been, we started paperwork for the vehicle. Um, that'll kind of take months, but we've got it started and uh, we'll, we'll go back and forth on that. Uh, the new IT tech that we are having is working out really well. And he's going to be, they're doing some training for us on Microsoft 365 later this week, I think. Um, computers, all enterprise actually finally got their laptops and using their new laptops. So it seemed to be working out well. It took for a long, long time for those to come because of, I guess, supply chain issues. And now they're all installed. So that's a good thing. Um, not, not a lot to, that you can see there have been very many expenses, mainly just salary expense out of it's last early. year. Yeah, it's early. So <laughs> give it time. Give it time. Yeah. 
That's it. Any public comment? Any members that I want to address? Speak now, for everyone, please. Well, that was easy. <laughs> don't seem to be raising their hand back there. Does anybody on the remote have a comment? Nope, I'm good. All right. We're going to be meeting again uh, in uh, June. It looks like June 20th in Jefferson County in Adams. Uh, with that, when we have anything else, do I have a motion to adjourn? You do. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Yeah. Thanks for coming. Um, What's the date of the next? June 20th. June 20th. Just a reminder, I am away on vacation next week, so. No, it's not allowed. If you need anything, <laughs> call the office. People will be around. You've been this, Katie. It's I know. Loud. I know. Well, you know, it's like even. They come baby the first time. I don't know, but I'm going to be really, really Real vacation. Real vacation. I'm 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 going. We're going on a cruise. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.